wrong way of a hill start and I stalled, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look at that. Welcome to Two Day Pass, Two Day Crew, and today, ah, what is this? This is a bloody manual car. So yes, I have the same vehicle, the A-Class Mercedes in automatic, and immediately this car is a pain in the ass. So if you're here to hear lovely stuff about manual cars, Maybe you might want to check another channel. Okay, so I'm at Greenford. Oh, already to move this bloody car. Right, you've got to get it in manual. Or sorry, you've got to get it in the clutch down first gear. But this bloody annoying little P that we've got here. In my car, all you do is literally start the car and then put it in drive and go. This one, you've got to put the clutch down, put it in manual, find the biting point, set the gas then that P turns off, or you manually turn it off by pulling this here. Oh, too much to do. Why do I even bother? Right, anyways, we're gonna go do a driving test route, and I'm gonna show you how to use a manual car. So I've had a little bit of practice, a little bit rusty. Now we're getting started, and I'm moving out onto this horrible road. So Greenford's got plenty of hills, and closed junctions. Here I have to peep and creep. Now you probably see I can't see much. Okay, we've got the white picket fence and this green bush with a lovely sign there. Come on, England! And we're gonna edge out past this bush. What can we see? What can we see? Ah, okay, there's no one coming. Now I'm gonna raise the clutch halfway, not all the way, all the way once I get straight and add the gas. So if you're driving a manual car, your clutch control is impeccable, especially when you reach these hills, because we're gonna be doing hill starts. So here I'm driving past Greenford Test Route, and I'm gonna go show you the Rainers Lane route, because this is the time of the day where you'll most likely do the Rainers Lane route, following the signs, and I'm passing Greenford Driving Test Center just here on the left. So you're more than likely gonna start from that side road. Sometimes you can park on this road, then you'll walk to the car with your examiner, and then your examiner will ask you a show me, tell me question. So you'll start off with doing a tell me question, and then sometimes now because of the COVID restrictions, you might be asked your show me question at the beginning before driving. So the most common one for that will be the window. So the examiners do require the window to be open on a driving test now because of the ventilation due to the COVID restrictions. So they will ask you to open and close the window for your show me, tell me question before you even start okay normally the show me question is done as you're driving okay and that is still very common now here I am approaching the first junction most people fail their driving test here I'm going to turn left and I can go on these broken very faded white lines now I'm actually shaking my leg is slightly shaking and my knee is tired just from driving the vehicle here. I do not have a handbrake. I have this automatic one which I can push if I want, which will put that P on. In my car, once I put the gas on, it goes. So let's try that. Yes, it's the same in this car. So once you put the gas on, it goes. You also have this hold. That hold there tells me if I release the brake, my car stays still. I can take the time to find the biting point. It still stays on hold. That is allowed on your driving test. So if you wanted to do the heel start that way, I'm holding the clutch, which is burning the clutch out. So if you have a manual car or you're teaching in a manual car, this destroys your clutch from holding it too long. So I'm gonna push it back down, but I'm terrified I'm gonna roll back. So I'm looking at that hold sign just to make sure that that stays on. If it doesn't, I'll immediately go to the brake. Pushing the brake actually disengages the hold. So now I'm gonna do a wrong way of a heel start. And I stalled, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look at that. And I've got someone on the driving test behind me. And now they're beeping me. The road is clear, right, left, right. And we move off. That's the minimum observations, right, left, right. So there's someone behind me on a driving test. And the examiner's probably thinking, what the hell is this guy doing in front? He's supposed to be an experienced driver. You don't even know I'm a driving instructor. And I stalled, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Comments down below, please. What an annoying, terrible driving instructor. Can't even drive a manual car. Um, 
why would I even want to drive a manual car? Why am I even driving this manual car, you may ask? So my car's gone in for a service, so the lovely people at Mercedes Brentford have loaned me this manual car. And immediately I feel like I've gone back at least 20 years. This is just a joke in today's day and age. Hold technology on, maybe even put that parking, automatic parking on so I don't roll around. While I secure the car, I can put it in neutral and wait because this traffic light takes forever. Normally at this traffic light, your examiner will ask you a silly question like, what would you normally be doing today? Do you study? Do you work? Yada, yada, yada. That's just literally to break the silence. Find the biting point, got the examiner behind me watching to see if I'd stall again and gently raising the clutch and applying, oh, what the? Okay, yellow means prepare to stop, stop again, hold on again, holding the clutch down into neutral, and then finally I can relax. Now, if anybody that is new to the channel, um, you'll probably be none the wiser of how much I bash on the manual cars, and I get a lot of stick for it. However, when the tide comes and it changes and everybody is driving an automatic car, then hopefully people will look back at this and think, you know what, the guy actually had a point. And providing that the government do go ahead in London, in the UK, and the rest of the UK, with especially with the big cities um, across Europe, like Paris and Germany, they're implicating this uh, kind of pollution, anti-pollution, congestion, trying to reduce emissions. And manual cars are seeming to be less and less common, electrics becoming more and more common, uh, automatic seems to be a standard for most real, uh, re oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Car, re, re oh God, someone write that in the comments. Retails, re car retailers, is that correct? Okay, most of these brand new cars that are coming out are all coming automatic. Uh, an old story, when I bought my new car, I went to ask the lady if they made this car, the same car I'm driving now, in manual, and she laughed at me. And I felt a bit embarrassed, but I asked her, why are you laughing? And she says, why do you want to drive a manual car? And to be honest, she has a point, and I didn't want to drive a manual car. I wanted to get out of that manual car and get an automatic car but basically she was saying yes it does come but it comes six months later than the automatic cars so if the brand new car companies are making brand new cars all in automatic luxury cars then why would they even want to because their clientele wants automatic why would you rush out to go and make the manual version i understand if you're buying i don't know a porsche gt3 and you're going on track days yes you will get more performance from your manual you can block change use your engine braking, etc. But in today's day and age, driving, commuting to work or whatever you're doing, you will not want a manual car. It will literally give you lower back pain and knee pain, especially if you're driving all day long, every day. It is a hassle, not a pleasure. Unless you're on a track, don't drive a manual car. Okay, if you're taking a driving test in Greenford, then if you are in a manual car, you must do double the amount of lessons in order to get your clutch control on point. Because if it's not, you're most likely stall like I did earlier at the junction. That first junction is an actual crucial junction at the beginning of your test. It's where the nerves will be at their highest. You've got to hold, my leg was shaking. What do you think is going to happen to somebody that's brand new to driving? Driving a driving, uh, driving a manual car on that hill, trying to find that biting point, having the cars, I was getting beeped, having the cars behind you beep, and maybe they're way too close as well, which puts that pressure, seeing them in the rear view mirror, breathing down your neck as you're trying to find that biting point, set the gas, and deal with your handbrake or the hold technology or the automatic uh, it's just too much, guys. Why? Honestly, if, if, if I miss something, please do put it down in the comments. Okay, this car does have technology on it where it bings at me if I reach the speed limit. However, this is the basic version of this vehicle. It has a smaller screen and it doesn't have all the nice little extras which I enjoy. So I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone. You may have noticed the speed limit on this road is 20 miles an hour. And that means I'm in third gear, literally not even accelerating. 
and it's at 20 miles an hour. If I put it in fourth, that will hold me at 20 miles an hour and I won't even need the gas. Now I'm following the signs to Rainer's Lane and I have been following the signs to Rainer's Lane. Block change to second gear now. So I went from fourth, I'll show you that again, fourth, down on the clutch, holding the brake, over to second, up on the clutch. It's clearish. that guy's really slow and he's turning left. Now, this is important. I'm in the left lane doing the second exit. Notice this stony patch here on the left where no one drives? Well, that is the left lane. Mirror signal left, checking over my shoulder because I know I have to move out to the right because of this parked vehicle. So I'm just making sure it's clear and safe on the right before I change my direction to the right hand side. Now this roundabout coming up here is super important. Still following the signs for Rainer's Lane. Now after this sign for Rainer's Lane, there's a tiny little sign here saying bus lane ahead. Thanks, council. Yep, more money for the revenue. Yeah, you're not going to see that sign, are you? Unless someone tells you it's there. So now I'm keeping the left lane again into this little stony area. Mirror, mirror, signal left. And I can use the bus lane, providing it's after 10 a M, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have a driving test after 10 a.m. and you're doing the Rainers Lane route, it's super important you know about that last roundabout and that you can use the bus lane when you exit. And you must use the bus lane to exit because you're following the signs to Rainers Lane. We'd normally use the left lane when we exit the roundabout, providing it's safe to do so. I shifted to fourth gear there, approaching the junction, block change, holding the brake, down on the clutch, over to second, check the traffic on the right, right, left, right, and take the next road on the left. Mirror, mirror, signal left. That is the end of your independent drive. Follow the road ahead, and I will give you directions from now on. So that's usually what the examiners will say at the end of your independent drive. Now I'd like you to find a convenient place to pull over and stop on the left. So I'm looking for trees as trees will have raised curb. I'm holding the clutch down into first gear, raising the clutch, letting the car just trickle forwards, down on the brake, down on the clutch, into neutral. That's wrong. Keep yourself in gear. Secure the car while it's on hold. Okay, but I'm going to put the parking brake uh, on and then into neutral and checking that's a neutral you bloody neutral bloody car right and then you know you're safe to release the clutch oh my god it's like being at the gym okay now we're going to move off so the examiner wants to see that you find a safe place to pull over and stop on the left next to raised curb not blocking the road for the main road traffic so if you get a very narrow road be careful of parked cars on the opposite side of the road as stopping near those may obstruct the main road traffic checking i'm in first gear starting to find my biting point that's my preparation including the indicator doing my final checks over my shoulder into the blind spot oh my god this is horrendous oh so that whole technology was holding the brake as I was trying to find the biting point. It still stayed on the brake as I was raising the clutch beyond the biting point. Almost stalled again. But Jesus, somebody save me. Okay, so now I'm following this road. This is a typical road that the examiners will take you down on any driving test center you will have a road similar to these conditions. The conditions I am referring to are parked cars on both sides of the road and potential oncoming traffic. That means you may have meeting with oncoming traffic. A meeting situation is one of the areas next to roundabouts that people fear the most on their driving test. It's about assessing the speed of the vehicle that is oncoming. If the vehicle is slowing down, keep going. If the vehicle is speeding up, slow down and stop. So let's look at the red car. Is the red car slowing down or speeding up? I think he's speeding up, or her. So I'm going to prepare to move over to the left, clutch down, into first gear, holding the clutch down, keeping the brake gently on, and now checking over my shoulder, just because I like to be extra safe. Checking the mirrors is what you need to do on your driving test, and that is for the change of direction. So as I move in and out around parked vehicles, 
I change direction. At the same time, I'm having to change gear. So not only am I having to do mirror checks, shoulder checks, if you're comfortable with them, I'm changing gear at the same time. If I was in an automatic car, I would not need to worry about the clutch. I just gently hold the brake, make my way through, no gear changes, just mirror checks, making the drive easier for me. And my personal opinion, if something's easier for you, correct me if I'm wrong, it's safer. So when I say that an automatic car is safer, these are the reasons why I say it's safer. There's no chance of me stalling on an uphill start like I did at the beginning of this video. And there's no chance of me rolling back either because the car will stay still. Um, in a manual car turning right, this turn is super important. Those are road markings on the left over there. So when I turn right, I'm almost doing a U-turn because I'm following this road once I turn into it. So look at the road markings, rewind the video if you need to, and notice that when I turn right, I stay on this road afterwards, and I don't go ahead and into that new road that's marked by white road markings. That will show you a new road. At the roundabout, turn left, mirror, mirror, signal left. And now I'm looking for traffic on the right. I'm still in second gear, gently off the brake. Just let the car roll and back on the brake again. Ready to change gear if there's someone on coming. No, this car can go quite slow in second gear. So I got down to seven miles an hour there. Now on roads like this, um, you would probably benefit from doing slower speeds. So here I'm doing 17 miles an hour and I feel like this is an appropriate speed. Now an appropriate speed means that you're able to react. So if there was an oncoming car, I could process that information and then react. Okay, if somebody opened the door, I'm at a safe distance, but I'll be able to slow if needed and stop or change direction. And that give me enough time to check the mirrors, make sure it's clear and then change direction. Okay, let's get some air conditioning on as I'm frying, even though it's not sunny. Okay, at the end of the road, turn left, mirror, mirror, signal left, roughly five car lengths from the junction. And now I'm going to hold my position, keeping to the left, following the curb, right, left, even though it's clear, right again. Now, did you see what I just did there, guys? I was in second gear about to move out at the junction. Now, the old dog has still got the tricks because I looked down to check I was in gear and I wasn't. So I had to go back into first gear as I was still observing, as I was then raising the clutch in first gear, adding the gas, moving out, looking at the same time. Would I really want to be doing all of this on a driving test and providing that the government keep to the guidelines from 2030, all cars would be going electric, then why would I even want to get started? I'm just thinking about you guys. I've got two daughters. No way am I going to get them on a manual car. Are you mad? Because why are they going to want... I wouldn't want them driving a manual car and having all that stress about stalling injunctions. The stigma of, oh, you're not a real driver unless you drive a manual car is dead. I, I would recommend, if you don't believe me, go down to your local pub and ask any old boy there that's drinking at the bar if he drives. And if he does, ask him if he's driving a manual or an automatic. And I guarantee you he's driving an automatic because he's sick and tired of changing gears, which is just doing his back in and the knees. If you're a del delivery driver like I was, oh my days, by the end of the day, I could barely walk. My knees are in so much pain. So, guys, I know I'm ranting, but I really hope this makes or uh, helps you have a little bit of experienced advice, okay? Because a lot of people that talk about this rubbish, oh, yeah, you're not a real driver, they don't have experience. They've been driving, like, literally two minutes, and they're just giving it to Charlie Big Potatoes because they think they're better than you. It's just an ego flex, so totally ignore them. Look at the road markings here. A lot of people failed a driving test here. I'm going straight. Use the straight arrow to go straight. If you use the left only arrow, you will fail your driving test for road markings. Check the left mirror, interior left mirror, as you exit the roundabout. If I would like, and I think it benefits, I would signal there to show people I'm going to exit the roundabout. But because it's a mini roundabout, there is no need to signal on the exit. I'm checking my mirrors to make sure it's clear and that no 
a-hole <laughs> has used the left only lane to go straight. Super unlikely unless they're a learner and the driving instructor's not teaching them correctly. Now here, even though there's no road markings, I'm still going to continue to use the right lane to go straight ahead. You might be screaming at the TV now and going, but Scott, you can't do that. You must use the left lane to go straight ahead. Yes, the highway code does tell us to use the left lane to go straight ahead, but local knowledge actually tells me that would not be a good idea at that junction. The reason being is because everybody on the left goes left into Sainsbury's over here. Other supermarkets are available, but I've never seen someone. Obviously, it can happen. Someone might use that left lane to go straight as well. That's why I was checking my mirrors on the exit to see if there was another road user alongside before I exit the roundabout. Interior mirror, left mirror, and signal left, regardless of this being a left-only lane. I'm going to signal as I believe it will benefit any pedestrians that are looking to cross the road. Now, this is a red traffic light. I know it applies to me because there is a stop line here on the road. Now, we always stop at the first stop line, which is this solid line here where that vehicle has stopped and not entering into any bicycle boxes. Even if you're a motorbike, that box is not for you. It's only for bicycles. Three points on the license and a fine if you go into bicycle boxes. Probably never happens, so save the comments. However, on your driving test, you will be given a serious driver fault and fail your driving test, regardless of the circumstances. Anytime you stop in a bicycle box, right, left, right, because there's giveaway lines here, you are potentially at risk of a penalty and on a driving test, receive a serious driver fault. It did happen to a student of mine which then went home to read the highway code and noticed that it's in the highway code that you can stop in the bicycle box, but that's to avoid an accident. It doesn't mean it's acceptable. It's still a violation of the Road Traffic Act, so you will receive a serious driver fault. So don't try to have excusitis and excuse your way out of a serious fault. You have been warned, ladies and gentlemen. Now, sometimes I feel like a headmaster at some... I don't know, horrible school and I'm talking too strict to people, but I'm only just trying to pass on the knowledge. Please do not shoot the messenger. Now, there is another independent driving. You can use these side roads down here in this whole area on the left to go and do your maneuvers with your driving test examiner. Uh, however, I'm just going to follow the route. You will come back out here onto this road and you may be asked to follow signs to central London. Now, this part of the route um, can be asked as an independent drive as a separate one from the Rainers Lane. However, this is all still part of the same route. So you might be asked to follow signs to central London. You may be asked to follow signs to Rainers Lane. You're more likely checking I'm in gear and I downshifted to first, which is natural to me when I stop. Uh, but just double checking I'm in gear before moving off. Um, so you may be asked to do this one instead. But yeah, you're more likely to have the sat nav telling you the directions. Mirror, mirror, signal left. The interior mirror doubles up as my mirror for change of speed, which means slowing down or stopping. Now I've stopped in gear, second gear. Do I need to stay like this? No. Do I need to stay in first gear like this? Yes, if you want to. So you'll see that my foot is holding the brake pedal. I apologize for it being gray and dark today, but I wanted to get this video out to you guys so that you know how to do something at the Greenford Driving Test Centre. Now, you might have just heard me talking too much and then someone gently reminded me to move off at that light. That is a serious driver fault. Ladies and gentlemen, the driving instructor from Two Day Pass that thinks he knows everything has just failed his driving test. What a numpty. <laughs> right, anyways, guys, pay attention to the traffic lights because if that does happen to you on your driving test, that is a serious driver fault, okay? Um, if your driving test examiner is feeling a little bit discretional and they decide to use their discretion and put that down as a normal driver fault, then don't kiss them, don't hug them at the end of your test. Just say, thank you very much. You are a very kind person and I hope you have a lovely day. And yeah, that's about it really, okay? Uh, we all know the restrictions, so I don't need to go there with explaining why you don't want to kiss or hug your driving test examiner, even if you do pass. Okay, now we're going to be going towards central London, guys. So remember the signs here. It's very hard to read and follow signs. I always felt like I...
I missed the signs on my driving test. So talk about the examiners. If you want to ask them, have I missed the sign? By all means, go ahead. Now approaching the junction, 19, 18, 16, 15, 10 miles an hour, second gear, right, left, right. It's clear. I'm in second gear and I'm on the gas, ladies and gentlemen. 50 mile an hour, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. 50 miles an hour, 6 gear, and stay at 50 miles an hour. I'm going to cheat and put cruise control on, but you guys are not allowed to use cruise control. Mirror, signal, maneuver, checking over my blind spot. I like to look over my shoulder. Now, I must stay at the speed limit, guys. Here, I need to still follow signs of central London. This is where people fail the driving test. So, again, mirrors. Signal. Look over your shoulder, called lifesaver checks, if you feel comfortable with this, or just the mirrors is good enough. Now, by looking over my shoulders, I will see anybody in the far lane, the far right lane, that may want to change lanes into this middle lane at the same time. Now, I've got a speed change here, 40 miles an hour, I'm at 35. I'm going to go into fifth gear, deciding what gear to use. All right, 30 miles an hour. I can go a bit quicker because the car in front or the vehicle in front is now moving a bit faster. And I'm at 36. I'm holding a two second gap from the vehicle in front. This is super important. Let's try six gear. Yeah. All right, feels comfortable. I like highest gear possible, lowest revs possible. This is called eco driving, ladies and gentlemen. And it is marked on the driving test. However, it will not count towards your total marks. Now, with the vehicle in front, let's measure a two second gap. So I'm going to take a landmark like the sign, the yellow sign, where these white markings in the hard shoulder start. So when it gets to the yellow sign, only a four breaks a two second rule. And I have not reached that sign by the time I finished saying that sentence. That means I am beyond a two second gap, which is acceptable. If I'm under a two second gap in dry conditions from the vehicle in front, I will potentially receive a serious driver fault for following distance. Now I'm at 40 miles an hour. I'm checking out this driving examiner slash instructor here. And now I'm moving into the left lane. Mirrors, signal. Moving in, he's changing, so that means my distance will increase from that vehicle. Nice move, excellent distance from the vehicle behind. It's roughly about four car lengths. Now, if you look in your mirrors and you see that the vehicle in your mirror is in the center of your mirror, and then that is a safe distance to change lanes. If the vehicle is filling your mirror like it is now, this is too close. And you'll see now as the vehicle passes me, it's literally next to me where their vehicle fills the mirror. Now you can use this entrance here on the left. So let me detour to show you this, because this is a nightmare. Mirror signal maneuver, coming in here. Now usually you will, I'm gonna do a quick bay park and come back out. Now usually you'll come from the road ahead, Second gear, let's take first gear because I'm in a car park. I'm going to do a hard left here, keep my signal on. Now the examiner will say to you, choose any bay and drive forwards into the bay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the reference points here. I'm going to use the right side because I've got more distance from the bays on the right, but I can't go into the second aisle. I must stop in the first aisle. Now my reference point is the first white line in the bay that I want which is this bay that's not directly on my right, not this one, but the one just next to it. So I'm going to make sure it's safe by checking all the way around the vehicle, both blind spots. Now I've done my safety checks. I've got my signal applied. Make sure I'm prepared correctly in first gear. And I'm holding the clutch, ladies and gentlemen, just holding it at the biting point. Little bit up, little bit down, little bit up, little bit down, little bit up little bit down and stop when I'm straight. Make sure I can see that the line is just under my mirror uh, or behind the mirror, depending on your height. Your eye lines are different, reference points look different. That means I know that I'm far enough in. If I'd like to, I've got the brake on, I've put the car in neutral, so I held the brake, put the car in neutral. I'm gonna secure the car, or if you wanted to, you could switch the engine off for extra security and I'm opening the door to see the line. So that I know roughly how far I am from the pavement. 
and most cars will have, uh, sorry, from the white line, most cars will have blind spot mirrors where you'll be able to check the sides and see that you're inside the white lines. Now that I've completed my Forwards Bay Park, this is really annoying, reverse gear. So up, over, down, reverse camera, and here it doesn't tell me I'm in reverse gear. All right, anyways, reverse camera. Now I'm gonna reverse out to the left, all round observations, gently up on the clutch again, hold at the biting point. Oh, this stupid car. Oh, turn that bloody parking brake off. Pull it out to turn it off. Whoa, and it rolls a little bit. Oh God, manual cars, seriously. Right, now I'm looking over my shoulders again because it took me a hot second to get the car out of that bloody park and then make it move. Um, I could have added the accelerator. I guess that would have took it off the park naturally like this. So let's put it back on. There's the P. Hopefully you can see that. Now, biting point up. Just checking I'm in first gear. Got my steering here so I can make sure my steering's pointing the way that I want, which is very helpful. Got the biting point, car's not going anywhere. So add the gas, and that turns that parking, the uh, automatic parking brake off. Okay, holding the clutch, all the way up off the clutch. Now we're gonna turn right. I just had another little look around just to make sure. And now I'm gonna exit and go back onto the dual carriageway. So really slow, just making sure that guy in front doesn't move off, no one comes in or out of the car park watching for pedestrians, nice and gentle whenever you go in and out of car parks. And now I'm gonna wait here at the exit just to make sure it's clear, off the brake, up on the clutch, add the gas and move out. Now, here it's 20, that 50 sign is super confusing. Is it 50 or is it 40? Well, I guess it's 50 for about two meters and then it changes to 40. Why is the council so retarded? Take the sign down that says 50. Right, now this is the hard part. Look over your shoulder, use your mirrors, and build your speed. Second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. I'm at 42 miles an hour, so make sure I just add a little bit of brake, slow down. This guy's closer than the two second gap. Let's measure. Only a full break to two second rule. So now I'm at a two second gap. So I increase the distance, making sure that I maintain a two second gap. I'm going to go back to the test center now. So mirror, interior, left mirror, and signal left. Coming out here on the left, keeping to the left, holding the left lane. Make sure you cancel the left signal. I had one lady that kept the signal on as she exits the dual carriageway and then drove past this next road here on the left with a left signal on and that was the only reason why she failed her driving test because the signal would confuse any road users that are looking to emerge out onto this section of road therefore it's a serious driver fault for incorrect signal now we're approaching the traffic lights brake on 15 14 10 9 um, 0 and I've held the brake, put the clutch down as I was stopping, as you need to put the clutch down every time you stop a manual car. And I've put myself in first gear, but my knee is hurting. So I'm gonna put this electronic brake on, handbrake, put it in neutral. Um, I could use the hold technology by squeezing the brake pedal. No, that's not working. Right, okay. Anyways, I'll just leave it with the parking brake. Oh, now into gear, now biting point, now gas, move it off. And literally, I'm able to do that quite quickly. But if you're learning to drive, that'll take you probably about five seconds. You really want to be doing it in like one, one or two seconds. Otherwise, the car behind you gets annoyed, starts beeping, and the pressure comes on. Shoulder check, merging traffic, mirror, mirror, signal right, moving over into the right lane. Now I'm gonna keep fourth gear, I'm in fourth gear as I was doing that, roughly 20 miles an hour, too fast, slow down 20 miles an hour, and keep your speed at 20. If you, if you do go over the speed limit slightly, considering it's not for a considerable duration, uh, then it may be a driver fault, okay, and not a serious or dangerous driver fault. So just make sure that you're always complying with the speed limits, 
lots of speed changes, confusing speed signs sometimes, like the 50 one we had earlier. Um, anyways, back to what we're doing now. Let's not digress and go on another rant. Okay. Um, holding the clutch down and braking to stop. Leave tyres and tarmac. And that means that we're at a safe distance from the vehicle in front in case it rolls back or in case it breaks down and we need to go around or change lanes. We have enough room to do so safely. Okay, now we're approaching a traffic light. How many lanes are there? If you're not sure, keep one meter from the left, which is what I'm gonna do. And I'm driving over these white lines which mark out parking spaces. That's absolutely fine. We can drive over broken lines, providing it's safe and necessary. It's safe, I'm not gonna have an accident. It's necessary because I need to keep one meter from the left to maintain the left lane. Right, I put the whole technology on this time and I'm holding the clutch down, which literally is a pain in the knee. And now I'm finding the biting point. Oh, I stalled again. Find the biting point, add the gas, and then gently move off. Second gear. Now we're gonna come to third gear. So here we go, off the gas, down on the clutch, third gear, back up on the clutch, then back on the gas. So we raise one pedal up fully before we push the other one down. So fully up on the gas, fully down on the clutch, into fourth gear, now we're fully up on the clutch, and now we go back down on the gas. If you look at the situation where the road is flowing at 30, look how wide the road is, look at the visibility. Is 20 miles an hour a reasonable speed limit? Put your answers down in the comments below. Mirror, mirror, signal right. You're probably wondering why I was in the right lane because I'm turning right. Move into the yellow box junction. Stop and wait in the center of the yellow box junction, providing your exit is clear. This is the only exception to stopping and waiting in yellow box junctions and why they are designed. They're to increase the flow of traffic for cars turning right. Biting point, add the gas so I don't stall. Gently raise the clutch up as I gently accelerate. So it's like a balancing act. If you imagine a set of scales, one side goes down, the other side goes up. That's how the clutch and the accelerator work in tandem. Okay, it's a finite uh, finite art and something that you do not need to be doing in this day and age. So it's up to you. If you do want to put yourself through that process and that pain, which will not be necessary or needed, in the future and even now unless the only reason why is you're trying to get a job driving a van and vans still currently quite a lot manual that's the only vehicle that is as most lorries are going automatic and pretty much any luxury car that you want and you want to drive a range over automatic you want to drive one of those nice bmws automatic you want to drive this car manual but there's lots of them that are automatic <laughs> don't get the manual one please this thing's hideous yes it's nice don't get me wrong but it's it's not that nice it's really not once you get driving guys and you experience what an automatic's like and how much more comfortable you'll feel how much more free time it gives you to focus on the road and not have to look and see what's going on and worry about stalling and all of that thought process that comes with driving a manual car is gone in automatic. All you need to do is just chill, man. Enjoy your ride. Look at the road ahead. Slow down, stop, and accelerate. Go. I mean, how much more simple would you like it to be? It's, it's gorgeous. And then you don't roll back. You don't stall on these hills. And the next video I'm going to be doing, guys, we're going to go in deep on these hills. All right, so back to the test center here where I'll be turning right and then stopping at the test center where this will be the end of the driving test route. So if you guys have stayed with me up until now and you found this video informative and you like laughing at me stalling at every junction, then please don't forget to leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this, then you know the drill, guys. I don't need to say it, right? Sub, ding, and off we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. I'll see you on the next video for Harrow on the Hill at Greenford Driving Test Centre. Oops, there's an examiner. Don't look, guys. Data Protection Act. We'll get sued. All right, speak to you later. Peace.